here is it's better for the patient. Less time you spend in the hospital is generally better. Um, the trend is in 10 years, 25 to 45% of these total joint procedures are going to be done on a patient basis. An acknowledgement of sort of that's the best outcome and best result for patients. Um, the moving the surgeries to the day surgery center, the orthopedic surgeries, will also free up space in Concord Orthopedic, the Concord Hospital. Concord Hospital is a partner in this, is going to be a have an ownership interest in state in the state surgery center. They have an ownership stake in the current surgical center for Concord Orthopedics. Um, I mentioned that this is a very good relationship between the two. Our hospital supports this proposal, and they we have been a vital sort of player in, in, in their success. Um, and so that relationship we will, will continue with the surgery center. Uh, we did look at other options. This was probably Concord Orthopedics' sixth or seventh choice down our option that we looked at. Um, as I mentioned, the, the day surgery center has to have a footprint, 20,000 square foot, one story footprint. Um, they looked at other sites, multiple sites on Pleasant Street, uh, some of which are in the neighbor's uh, capital. And one of the sites was too small, another site was too small, some had ledge issues. And they and other sites were for sale. Um, so they tried to locate something close to where they could be. And they looked also at other sites in town, and the distance is an issue. Um, the doctors cover the ER, they do cases at the OR, they see patients at the clinic um, on Pleasant Street. And uh, floating between two or three different places, you want to economize the time um, for, for everybody's sake. There are other uh, sites, other surgical centers that are further away. They do procedures at Hershey Pond. Um, and there are also um, uh, other ambulatory care centers in other parts of the state that are two or three miles from the hospital. If they had their choice, I think they would want to be closer to the hospital, as close as they could. If you're a patient, um, it's not just a matter of convenience, but if you're a patient, you want to be as close to the hospital as you can. You don't want to be saying, well, we've got you on the outer limit that we can get away with. Um, so being close was a concern. If we, if we could do it, we wanted to do it. And that's why we actually looked at other properties on Pleasant Street to try to see if the site can work. We also looked at, yes, kind of fire. How many cases have there been in the current, for the current day surgery center where patients have had to be taken to Concord Hospital? I, um, I think the question uh, veers into sort of uh, HIPAA territory. Um, but uh, I can't hear the I can't. It does come up. And it, and it has, and Dr. Norris, you can address it better than I can. Um, emergencies have come up, and you want to be as close as you can. Um, I, I'm not at liberty to say, to talk about other practices. Yeah, I have kind of more of a procedural question, because I think we're getting into the territory of site plan review, and my concern with rezoning is that we have to make decisions based on the integrity of the rezoning, not on someone's vision. And because once this is rezoned, um, Concord Orthopedics could find out that their green roof is too expensive, that their subterranean office is too expensive, and but it will be rezoned. And so we're kind of looking at the aesthetics when really we should be focusing more on, you know, public testimony. We know about Concord Orthopedics, we know, but we're really looking at rezoning an entire area. It's all going to be different. And when it's, once it's rezoned, Logistically, Concord Orthopedics could sell the land and decide they don't want to do that. So I kind of think we're spending an awful lot of time talking about site plan review issues when we should be really more focused on the bigger picture. Okay. That was great. And I, uh, I will get Thank you. So let's. Uh, no, I'm not sure my remarks. No, I know. Yeah. I know. The, 
talking about orthopedic look spent four years trying to find a suitable place. So to address um, your concern, they are committed to the site. Uh, they are committed to building on the site, and they've spent a lot of time planning and designing for building on the site. Um, they did look at building on their own site, and it wasn't feasible from a construction standpoint, an education operation <coughs> standpoint. They see, have 70,000 patient visits a year in Congress. And with 12 to 18 months of construction, to knock down one of their existing buildings and build on top of it was not feasible from a patient operation standpoint. Um, but to, to take your point, I'll get into the, the broader picture of what I think, what we think the benefits are to the community and looking at the rezoning issues. Um, the, this, let's see, this district, and I've got under plan one, but this residential <laughs> RM district is in the urban growth boundary. This one third of a mile is in the urban growth boundary. Um, the urban growth boundary is in part of multiple master plans um, and is part of the current master plan. And so looking at the land use goals and what, what can be done with this district and some of the goals of the urban growth boundary, if you look at tab eight, and Roman 3-1, the land use goals are to retain the urban growth boundary as a policy guide for land use, open space, and utility and transportation infrastructure, planning and storage, <coughs> and to discourage <coughs> sprawl by focusing future development and concentrating demand for services within the urban growth boundary. Another land use goal from the master plan is number four, to provide for land uses to support economic development, which encompasses a broad range of economic activities that provide employment opportunities, facilitate necessary services, make goods available to the citizenry, as well as expand the tax base in the city. Um, this, this, this design is a six to eight million dollar design. The current Taxes on the property at 297 are about $13,000 a year. The projected estimated taxes that the city would receive for a six to eight million dollar building are between $160,000 and $200,000 a year. And to give you some context, the cost of educating a student in Concord is roughly $14,000 a year. Concord Orthopedics currently, for its current site, pays in excess of $300,000 in taxes. If you go to tab, that same tab eight, and look at uh, Roman 3-4, um, there's a chart, and for existing land uses, and this is 2005 with the, these figures, um, for medical land use inside of the uh, urban growth boundary, uh, 105 acres of medical use is inside the urban growth boundary. Just less than an acre was outside of it. Um, most of the medical use right now is in the urban growth boundary. Um, this has evolved as the medical hub for Concord. The hospital has grown and grown here. Concord Orthopedics has grown and grown here. Dartmouth Hitchcock is here. Um, these other practices are here. There are other, in the master plan, and there's also a discussion of places like the Opportunity Corridor, um, which is more, I would submit, more suitable for a non-medical office development or office use, where you don't have patient concerns, where you don't have doctors covering multiple locations today. Um, those areas are good and good for development and an important part of sort of the conference vision for its economic growth. But the urban growth boundary is also the linchpin of targeted and smart growth for the city. Um, the master plan, um, and this gets also to the benefits of the community and sort of the, the goals of the master plan. Um, if you look at tab eight, Well, could we have you switch the mic to the other side of the computer there? Just turn the whole thing and put it over there. 
If you look at tab 8 and uh, Roman V, uh, page 15, the economic future of the city is envisioned, is envisioned as one that rests upon, and the third thing is nurturing growth and accommodation of businesses that originated in or sought locations in Concord, and which attract individual workers seeking high quality working and living conditions, rather than the recruitment of large scale employers. Um, this gets to the homegrown argument and a homegrown business that is a very good corporate citizen and supported the community in many, many ways, uh, financially and other. And you want to see a local business continue to thrive and continue to do well. Um, they're in a very different category than, than um, a corporation from Delaware that wants to put up a big box somewhere. Um, this is a local business that's been here since the 70s, where it was founded by two doctors, and now it has 160 employees in Concord. Why it benefits the greater community in addition to the tax benefits. Um, and when I mention the tax benefits, if you look at the total rezone, tax benefits would be significant. That's a, that's a big number. Um, 50 million is, is, is the number of revenues if the whole district is rezoned. Whether that would happen under Plan 1 or not, I'm not sure. But looking, putting the tax issue aside for a moment, um, if you look at what the medical community means to Concord, it helps attract good jobs, it helps attract businesses to Concord that good health care does act as a magnet for. Um, a lot of communities can't offer that to businesses that are looking to relocate. Um, doctors. Concord Orthopedics wants to, of course, compete. Having a state-of-the-art facility helps attract them attract new doctors who, in turn, treat people who live here. Um, having a state-of-the-art day surgery center is good for this community. It's good for the people that need these medical services. It's good for the continued sort of reputation and jobs that the medical sector supports and is fortunate to support in our community. Um, I'll turn the microphone over to Dr. Norzi in a moment. Um, but looking at the factors, the factors you need to consider, the primary ones are the economic impact, the consistency and and to the values and goals in the master plan and the impact on the neighborhood in the district. Um, there are two plans for you to consider. Um, we know we have an immediate need and either plan is acceptable to us. We, we need and want to build this day surgery center on the site in Concord. Um, and we spent four years trying to find a site and get this done. Um, other communities, other medical communities are um, are gaining and gaining on their ability to expand and commit to development. Um, we want to stay at the forefront and be, continue to be able to provide excellent care and be sort of the medical hub and be one of the engines that drives on our local economy. Um, so there are two plans for you to consider. Um, we think both make sense. Our goal is to get the day surgery center built. Each plan has a different impact and different factors for you to consider. Um, and the choice will be yours. Um, but we'd ask for you to recommend um, either plan or both plans to the city council. Um, and so those are my remarks that I have for now. I'd like Dr. Norsey, I'll turn it over to Dr. Norsey to talk about it. A little bit of the history of how the investigated this, the actual day surgery center, what it does, what it means, and what it means to the practice of orthopedic medicine um, in Concord. So I, I don't know if this mic is working. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm Peter Norte, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys tonight about our project, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be brief with Bob. But, uh, they, uh, 
I've been in Concord since 1995. I came here after doing my residency up in Dartmouth, and uh, you know, I've seen the hospital grow from just sort of a, uh, you know, what I thought was a community hospital to more of a regional medical center. You know, and it really has changed. I think all of you have probably seen that growth over the last 20 years, and, and certainly our group is no different. And I think that really my part tonight is just to kind of give you the clinical reasons for why we're trying to do what we're doing. And, uh, one of them is obvious, it's just we're bigger. You know, when we built this surgery center and it opened in 1995, um, you know, it was 10 partners and I think there were 14 providers. You know, now we have 17 partners and we have 30 something providers. So we're close to 34 providers. And so we just need space. We can't right now in our current surgery center, we can't meet the needs of the community. We don't, we don't have the capacity to meet the volume. So that's an obvious thing, but it's worth stating in terms of uh, what our goals are. I think you know one of the questions that's come up or one of the things that have come up in many of the different forums is well why don't you just do more cases at Concord Hospital? Well they, they have capacity issues themselves and we can't just do cases there. There's no capacity there at this present time and not for the foreseeable future in terms of that. And I think Bob alluded to the issue of efficiency and we, we have I think the only surgery center in the state that focuses on just one discipline. I don't think there's any others that do that. So the ability for us to do just orthopedics and the ability to do that every day is unique and it's something that we need, I think, in order to keep sort of being competitive relative to other groups. And I think the other challenge which Bob alluded to was the issue of uh, uh, outpatient total joints. And this is a trend that's happening nationwide. It's not a New Hampshire trend. It's not a Concord trend. It's, it's something that's happening across the country. And, if anything, we're in the back end of the bus or the back end of the train with this, and we've purposely been very slow to engage in this because there's a lot of debate in the medical literature about whether or not it makes sense to do outpatient joints. You know, Historically, total joints have been done on an inpatient basis. You come in on Wednesday, you go home on Friday or Saturday. But clearly the national trends, and this is driven by a lot of things, insurance, it's driven by cost, it's driven by quality, but the national trends are to do, you know, joints on an outpatient basis and they're being done even in New Hampshire and, and communities.